how much does a decibel cost? We're putting together a sound system, we're specking one, and looking for a certain amount of volume and coverage. Assuming we've got a sound system that covers the audience area properly, and we want more volume, how much does it cost to add that additional volume? Is it linear or is it not? Is it exponential? What about if we're asked to reduce the cost of a sound system? How much PA can we cut? And if we lose a dB, how much money do we save? How much is that worth? I'm gonna poke at this from a bunch of different angles and yeah, it should be interesting to look at. It's a project that I'm facing right now, so I thought I would share it with you. So here's Sound Vision, and I've got a K2 system, and we'll look at a K2 rig in six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 12 boxes. Single hang, just to keep it simple rather than stereo, but you'll get the idea. And here we go. So here's a six box hang of K2. We can see the frequency response, and we're looking at these probes here, these four probes that are kind of at the perimeter of the listening area. We can see their distance by clicking on them. And we can see that it's about 264 feet away. This one here, position 363. So we're about 100 meters out looking at the volume. And there's our frequency response of those four probes. We can look at the mean as well, it gives us the average. So let's take a look at our SPL levels that we're getting from these various configurations. And we'll grab that here, SPL target, bring that up. And here is our six box system. And we can bring that out. And we can see that it's just over 94 dB at this reference point, which will stay constant. And for our next one, we've got it just under 96 dB. And then we go to just over 96 dB. And here with our nine box system, we're somewhere around 97. And here we're a little higher. And finally, we're just below 100. All right, so there's our SPL outputs of the various systems. The next thing I did was I level matched them. So I added gain, 5.2 dB of gain to the six box system. The seven's got 4.2. And I had to gain to get these coverage volumes very close to the same. And we can go through those. So this is my way of deriving the dB advantage. Now, we wouldn't be able to add 6 dB of 5.2 dB of gain to a six box system and get the same volume levels as a 12 box system at its maximum output, but it, we can see our coverage and we can kind of um, get that number out of there. All right, so the goal is to find out how much a dB costs us as we increase the volume of the system or its output capabilities. What I did is I extracted all of this. So let's go ahead and look at this here. I extracted all this info and put it into a spreadsheet. But before we get into the cost per dB, let's take a look at the cost of a system itself. These are K2 boxes, L acoustics, and they are not inexpensive. If you're not familiar with the cost of these, this may be shocking. I used list prices here, and one K2 box, $15,600. Now, each LA rack, which is the amp rack, which has three LA12Xs in it, an LA rack 2, costs about $56,000, and it can power either six K2, or it could power 9K2. If you put 2K2 per amp, you'll get the 6, or if you put 3, you get 9, and you can mix and match. You could put 3 boxes on 2 of the amps and 2 boxes on 1 amp and get 8 out of the amp rack, or, you know, 7 or whatever you want. But anywhere between the minimum of 6, actually the minimum is 1, right, but anywhere between the maximum of nine all the way down to whatever you want. And then I took, and they travel in packs of four. You can travel in packs of one, but I did packs of four for this, for the chariot and the cover, about $3,200. The fly bumper and bar that hangs them from the sky, I used a one-sixth ratio here, and that is assuming that we're using a bar to hang six boxes, and then motor, cable, and accessories. So what I'm kind of doing 
is determining a deployment per box cost. We know a single box costs 15,000. It uses one sixth of the rack or one ninth of the rack and of the cost of the rack, one quarter of the four high chariot, one sixth of a bumper if you hang six deep, one ninth if you hang nine deep, and you can hang up to 24 deep, so you could reduce that to 1 24th for bigger hangs. And then I threw in a number of $800 for motor, cable, or whatever per box. So now we've got a deployment cost per box of $26,600. That's approximately, if you paid full price for the boxes, how much it would cost to deploy a box. This is a handy number because if you deploy 20 boxes, you know it's going to be half a million dollars and so on. Now, discount. If you buy the boxes in higher quantities, you don't pay full retail, you buy them used, or you get discounts for whatever reason, you can reduce the cost. So I use a discount of 30%. Let's go to a discount of 40% here. And let's say you were able to acquire these boxes for 40% off of list and or reduce your costs somehow making your own cables and by whatever means. Okay, so now we've got deployment costs of 16000 and 14000 Scroll down here, average cost of deployment. What I did is I took those two numbers, averaged them together just to give a simple number to work with. And now we'll take a six-box deployment and we take that number times six, and we know that six boxes is 91,000, seven, 106, and so on, up to 12 boxes at $182,000. Now we know our cost to deploy these, and since I did the gain matching, we know how many dB, or what fraction of a dB we're going to gain by adding more boxes. We can now calculate a cost per dB gained. So if we put a six box system out, we spent our $91,000 on that gear and we deploy it. And then we decide, well, we want it a little louder. So we're going to add a seventh box. That dB, we gain about a dB and it costs about $15,000. If we go to an eight box system, we gain 2.2. Now the DBs only cost us $13,800 each and about the same for the nine box. When we go to a 10 box rig, our cost per DB is now 15,000 again and 12 box is 17,000. This is kind of interesting. Our first increase was more expensive. It got cheaper, then it came back to normal and then it got more expensive. Kind of interesting, I didn't really expect that. All right, so let's look at this as a weekly rental rate. Uh, here I used a weekly rental rate of 2.5% of our initial purchase price, whatever's determined in um, that grid above. And a daily rental rate of about 30% of that, or actually one third of that, three rental days equals a week. And here we can look at how much we're selling those DBs to the promoter or whoever's hiring us for. And we can see that the seven box, the DB costs $147 a day. Each DB costs $134. When we go to a 12 box, it's costing us $170 per DB. Well, this is all kind of interesting just to see how much we're paying or it's costing us to supply some extra volume or some extra level to the audience. Now the question is, how important is it? How audible are these differences? So you're planning on doing a 12 box system and then all of a sudden you've got budgetary pressures and you're asked to cut the budget down. What are the ramifications of dropping to, let's say a 10 box system? Well, the rental rate drops from $1,771 down to $1,475, so you save about $300, and you lose about 1.3 dB. Is it worth it? How do you quantify that? So let's listen to the various systems and the differences between them. All right, so let's go ahead and check this out. So here's the 12-box system. I'll get the pink noise fired up.
And let's go the other way. Can you hear the differences between the rigs? The audience members would hear that difference in average volume, but that doesn't tell the whole story. We could use compression on the six box rig and artificially increase the average volume a bit so we'd lose dynamics or alter the way we've deployed. But this is the baseline of what we're dealing with. Also, with the six box rig, you get an engineer that's turning it up too loud and all of a sudden they're distorting so the quality of the sound is dropped. Um, so this is definitely not fully encompassing, but it is an interesting thing to see how much these differences that we hear cost in dollar values. And you can scale this up or down if you have a system that is much less expensive than the Alacoustics rig. Maybe you take these numbers and divide them by two or three or whatever that is. All right, cool, cool. Thought this would be fun to do. If you've ever had dropouts or other data issues related to cable length or cable quality, this may be really interesting. All right, it's finally here. The new Supercat XM cable. This will run AES 50 guaranteed 110 meters and we'll be releasing it in 100 meter lengths and 10 meter lengths because we need to go to 11 and show that that 100 meter limit is not a problem and this will actually run at 130 meters polyurethane jacketed cat 6a grade and it'll be priced between the super cat sound and Super Cat Cables from Sound Tools. Super excited about this. We made it in red so you can tell which cable is safe to run a long distance X32, M32, or any Midas AES 50 or other long distance overruns. This stuff is just amazing. I've been working on the design for well over a year now and it's in and the rest will be coming soon. Awesome.